welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down five fundamentals of personal finance. Now, this is the first of a couple videos that, that we're going to be breaking down a lot of the fundamentals when it comes to finance. So the first fundamental we're looking at, guys, is making money. So this is about your regular nine to five job, really looking at your income, how you can make the most of it, whether it is working overtime, um, whether it is getting incentives, things of that nature, to increase the amount of money you're making from your current job. Now, people are starting to realize that it is kind of a cap where if you're making $15 an hour, you work 40 hours a week, you will make X amount of income. Regardless of how much you work, how much effort you put in things of that nature, you will work X amount of hours and make that amount of income. So it is pretty set with a job. That is where some of the side income comes in. When you look at something that I do such as YouTube, it is a side income that helps support your net income or your main income stream um, with additional revenue. Now, a lot of people do this with Lyft, with Uber, with delivery services, with Amazon, um, with YouTube, with TikTok. There is an incredible amount of things out there to make an additional amount of kind of side income, side hustle, whatever you want to call it, that can complement the primary income that you do have. Now, as a result of this, you can pay off your debt much faster when you are working additional or working the side hustle to go ahead and consolidate and pay off your debt, which brings us to our second step, guys, which is managing your money. Now, you want to make sure when you manage your money that you're not giving it away. What does this mean? Um, a lot of places charge fees for the services they provide. How can you get things cheaper? I always kind of talk about this when you look at insurance, when you look at mortgage rates, when you look at auto loan rates, when you look at checking accounts, savings accounts, CDs, you know, renting a house, buying a house, there are so many aspects of the way that you manage your money, which goes back to the methodology of the budgeting plan, what you can budget, what you can afford, living with inside your means, that 50, 30, 20 rule that we always talk about. Um, and if you don't remember what that, what that is, you can go back, watch the video a little bit ago. But really managing your money, knowing where it goes and seeing what is going to work. If you're paying $15 a month for a checking account, chances are someone else offers it for free. If you have a savings account that is paying no interest, chances are you can find a place that is going to pay to hold your money there. Now, that is a very easy, quick way to, to kind of manage your money. Think about it in a, a bigger picture where if you're spending money that you really don't need to, um, even if it's on services like streaming services, things of that nature, you might be better off without them in setting aside that $7, $10, $15, whatever it may be, in a savings account every single month, building up that emergency fund. Third one we talk about, guys, and one that I super, super stress a lot is building a budget, guys. Writing it down, making the groundwork, setting the right budget, making sure everything works within your budget, reviewing it from time to time, which means going back every week, every two weeks, maybe once a month, depending on your income, depending on your situation and what exactly changed and figuring out exactly where your dollars go and how much money you have at the end of the month. Like I always say, guys, there's two people. There's one person who gets paid, so you work your income, you work your side hustle. Um, at the end of the month, you try to think, where did all my money go? That is one type of person. Second person is, you do the same, you work your job, you do your side hustle. At the end of the month, you have X amount of dollars still left, saying, where can I most effectively budget this money and put this money to really make it work for me, whether it is, again, paying off debt, whether it is saving more, maybe it is paying down a car, paying down a house, the debt elimination aspect in building that budget, guys. Number four, we get into saving money. Now, we always talk about the emergency fund, guys. The emergency fund, and I stress this because it is super important, guys, is setting that aside for medical bills, for home repair, um, car fixes. If you happen to be unemployed, we're starting with that $1,000 in that emergency fund until we eliminate our debt, guys. Again, it's super easy to save money if you don't have debt. It's amazing. Fundamentally, if you do not have debt, even if you do have a mortgage, you literally roll it down to one payment. If the cars are paid off, if the bills are paid, um, if the credit cards are paid, if the unsecured loans are paid, literally the only thing you have to worry about is your home, then you're in a very good position financially. Have some additional steps once you do eliminate your debt. But again, that emergency fund is really there to help if something should happen. 
In addition to the emergency fund, guys, um, health savings accounts, always a good way to go. Um, and also looking, again, the budgeting aspect if you're saving to buy a house. Now, this is another one that is going to have a huge impact. So if you're saving to buy a house, guys, when you put money down, you can effectively get a better rate depending on the LTV of the home, things of that nature, your credit score. Um, but if you are putting cash down, similar to if you're buying an auto loan, if you're buying a home, um, a lot of times you can get a more affordable payment and you don't have to pay in a house instance, um, PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, um, things of that nature, because you have money in, you kind of have skin in the game at that time. Um, saving for a down payment for a home, which again, if you're following my steps, guys, step one, that thousand dollar emergency fund, step two, eliminate that debt. If you have no debt and you have, let's say you're just renting a place or you have, you know, you're renting an apartment, um, saving for that house is going to be incredibly easy again, because you don't have the debt. You don't have the overshadowing looming debt that is going to affect your debt to income ratios. It'll also allow you to save money um, kind of systematically so you can actually have a significant amount to put down a house. In turn, putting money down on the house, um, you get a better rate. With getting a better rate, you'll pay interest through the lower interest through the life of that loan, or you might not have to take it out for, for a full term. So what do I mean by that, guys? If you're looking at taking a 30-year mortgage, a 20-year mortgage, a 15-year, a 10-year, regardless of the term of your mortgage, you're going to have to pay interest. But the shorter the term, the possible lower the rate, the lower the rate, the less interest you're going to have. And you're going to be at a point where you're debt free for a second time because now you own a home and you do own that home free and clear. Second one, guy, or the final one, guys, is saving for college. Now, saving for college does use a compounding effect. Again, building this into that 20% of the budget, where even if you put you know, $25, $50 away per month, it is going to have a huge impact when your child gets ready to, to go to school. And you know, let's say 10 years, 12 years, 16 years, 18 years, whatever it may be, guys, when you start saving for college, you'll be able to put away a significant amount of money because then again, you don't have the debt, which brings us to our last one, guys, is the credit card factors. Credit cards are a tool. That is really the honest way to look at it, guys. Um, when you look at credit cards, are you going to need credit cards? Yes, you are going to need credit cards. Now, a lot of people will utilize the credit cards to live outside of their means. Um, using the credit cards as the tool that it is, there are a lot of reasons. Some of the basic ones, when you go to book a place, when you go to um, rent a car, they want a credit card. They will not take a debit card. Most of the companies that offer car rentals will not take a debit card. We've seen the same with hotels. Um, hotel rentals will take a credit card. Hotels will not take a debit card. And if they do, they will hold your funds in your checking account for an incredible amount of time. If anything happens to the, the room or the car, things of that nature, you will not get those back. Be very cautious when it comes to credit cards, guys, is there is some insane offers out of there. I think I seen one from Capital One for like $1,100 if you open a credit card, um, which of course there's all kinds of catches to it. But ultimately, if you have a credit card, you're going to be paying for the rewards that you earn. Let me say that one more time, just so you can catch it, guys. If you have credit cards, a majority of people do not pay it off in full every single month or do not pay it off religiously to actually benefit from the rewards. Most people with a high interest credit card will earn rewards. You might earn you know, a couple thousand dollars in a year, but looking at the amount you pay in interest, you're paying for your rewards through the interest that is charged within there. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Again, I just wanted to cover um, kind of the five fundamentals of personal finance. We're gonna get into a lot more of the fundamentals in the next couple videos, making sure, guys, that you really focus in on that budget, really find what applies to you um, within the personal finance realm. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.